A lot that's already went on this morning, hasn't it? And uh, I'm going to tell you what we're doing here this morning. We're here to celebrate all the mothers. And I've been hearing all about how good the mothers are and how everything is, is just everybody's talked so good about their mothers. But let me just share something with y'all. My mama was honor as everything. All right, was any of yours? Oh, my, hey, yeah, the rest of you lying. And I'm going to tell you why my mama was honorary because she had an honorary son. My mama was stubborn. Was any of y'all's parents stubborn? Oh, yeah, my mama, she was stubborn. She was something else. She was something to behold. And uh, my mama was a know-it-all, too. Y'all are probably thinking, Brother Steve, what in the world are you doing? I'm telling the truth. My mama was a know-it-all. She would tell me and she would give me directions on this is how you're supposed to do, this is how you're supposed to act, this is what... Oh, she'd give me advice on everything. And y'all, I want you to know something. I miss it so bad. Because I needed those directions. I needed that because I ended up being just like my mama. I was just as stubborn... I was just as honorary, and all these directions that she gave me, I needed them. Y'all, I think about it because all in the Bible, the Bible teaches about the, the mother, and, and let me tell you something about a mother. I've seen mothers love some of the meanest, hatefulest, sorriest human beings on the planet, and they still love them. Matter of fact, they take up for them. They'll go, to, they'll go to the jailhouse to see their son that they know their son is guilty beyond measure and they'll take up for that sorry child of theirs. You know why? Because they've got unconditional love. And let me tell you about that unconditional love of a mother. That's as close as you're ever going to get, child. Every single person in here, you're a child of a mother. And I, I, I would love to say that every single person here is a child of God, but I know better. Not every person in here is a saved, born-again believer this morning. I know you're not. You know how I know? Because you look around. There's people that's in here this morning that you came because of that mother and her influence that she had on you. And you may not come back to church for another year. So I know that more than likely your heart's not right. Brother Steve, why are you beating up on us? Let me tell you something. This may be the only time I get to tell you that Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross to save each and every one of you from your sins. And if you don't give your heart and soul to Jesus Christ, you'll spend eternity separated from the Lord God for the rest of your life in eternal hell. So there you got it. You know what's good? Y'all are not on my hands anymore. Because I've told you there's only one way to heaven. And it ain't being a good old boy and it ain't being a good old girl. It ain't being a good child. It ain't being, you'll never be good enough to get to heaven. But you can be righteous before God if you choose to. All you got to do is just lay down your soul and your heart to the Lord Jesus. Say, Lord, I need you in my heart. That unconditional love that a mama gives you is just like Jesus' love. It's good. Except Jesus' love never ends. The Bible talks about all the impact. Every one of us, we was impacted by our mother as we was growing up. Yesterday I was at a wedding. I was at a wedding yesterday and there was this young mother that came up and she had this little baby in her arm. We was going through the, going through the aisle, going to eat. I know y'all probably thought I wouldn't eat since I was there, but I did, I did. But that mother, she was holding that baby in her arm. And I was walking right in front of her, and we was going to, to each and every uh, event of food that's there. And it was an event now. And we would look at every one of those, those uh, places of food that was there, and I looked at that mama, had a hold of this baby. She had a plate, she had a fork, she had a, a spoon, had, a, had a napkins and all these things. And I, I said, can I help you? She said, no, I'm fine. Wasn't panicking at all. I was panicking trying to hold all my stuff, just get me some food on my plate. She was in no kind of panic whatsoever. She was there and she was just carrying that baby and, and every boy, she would put stuff on her plate. Do you know something I want to share with y'all? Whenever that baby grows up, that baby will not remember not one ounce of that day. But mama will. That baby will take it for granted that mama carried her and carried him 
all the way till they just could not. I want y'all to know something. I was a carried baby. My mama carried me. I was a spoiled brat. Any of y'all spoiled brat? Oh, y'all lying in church is what I'm talking about. I know you spoiled brats. I thank you. But I, but I was a spoiled brat, and I'm going to tell you, my brother, he stole my thunder. I was six years old, and my mama was carrying me at six years old, and here come my, it's true, then here come my little brother on. I thought, you know, I can't smother him. Mama will catch me. I can't give him away. Mama's not going to let me do that. And she'd watch him. And I remember I'd be peeking over that, over that crib looking at that little baby. And I'd think, oh, if I could just give him away, my life would be just like it once was. Oh, yeah, I spoiled rotten. I'm not going to lie to you. My mama, she was always there. Y'all, I'm going to tell you, the older I get, the more I realize how much my mama was watching me. In 3 John 4, it says this. It says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Y'all, I'm going to tell you something. This scripture right here is one that I realize that I think back and I think about all the things that my mama wanted me to do and all the things that my mama wanted me to accomplish and my mama wanted me to make something of myself. And let me tell you something about it. My mama knew my limitations. My mama knew that I wasn't a smart kid, and y'all have ended up figuring that out on your own, hadn't you? My mama knew that I wasn't the type of person that could, that could do some of the things that anybody else could do because my mama knew I was limited, just like your mama knew that you was limited. But I'm going to tell you what your mama did. She kept on provoking you. I'll never forget this. For the rest of my life, I will not forget that one day my mama came into my house, and she said, she said Steve, hunt. Let's load up. We're going to go. And I said, Mama, where are we going to go? She said, you don't need to know. Didn't I say she's honoring? You don't need to know where we're going. You just need to load up with me and come on. She took me to Memphis. We went to Memphis, and when we got there, she walked up to this man, and she went like this. She said, come here, come here. Didn't I say she was aggravating too? She saw that man and said, come here, come here, come here. That man walked up there. She said, I want you to fit him for a suit. I said, Mama, I ain't wearing no suit. She said, son, just do what I tell you to. She said, I want you to, to put on this suit. This man went and he fitted me for a suit. Oh, and whenever he got done, he started, does this look good? And she said, yeah. And, and he started to walk off. She said, no, 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 come here. I told you she was aggravating. Come here, come back here, come back here. He said, she said, I want three more of different colors that same size. I'm like, Mama, what in the world? And she said, and I want matching ties too. I thought, Mama, now I'm not wearing no tie. I'm just telling you, I'm not wearing no tie. And I said, Mama, I'm not going to go to enough funerals to go and have four suits with four sets of ties. She said, Son, all I want you to do is stand there. Whenever I got done, she said, I want belts too. She said, I want some socks. She said, and by the way, I want my son to have a pair of shoes. So I tried on those shoes that I had on and they fit. And, oh, I look like a million bucks as much as you can with the dollar bill. And she said, I need one more pair of shoes also for him. We walked out of there with all the things that I told you and when we walked into the, walked out and we got in the vehicle, this is what my mama told me. My mama said, I believe that you've been called to preach. I looked at her like she was crazy. Just like that you look at your mama whenever she starts telling you of all the things that you could become if you choose to. See, I want you to know my mama didn't tell me that, that I think that you're going to be a Christian. She knew I was already saved. She didn't tell me that I was going to be a, a professional ball player. My time had already passed. She didn't tell me that I was going to be a scholar because I couldn't read cat a lot of the times. But she told me, she said, you're going to be pastor. I want to share something with y'all that most every one of you do not know. Today is the anniversary of my 14th year at this church. 
14 years. And I want y'all to know, I want y'all to know that every Mother's Day, every Mother's Day, I remember that because that was my first day here. And the influence my mother had on me is something that you cannot understand unless you listen to your mama. Oh, my mama drives me crazy. My mama did too. Oh, my mama makes me want to just be so mad I can't stand her. My mama did too. My mama did, you can say my mama did whatever you want to, but let me share something with you. Your mama wants the best for you, and she will fight the world to make sure that you have it. You want to know how I know it? Because your mama's got you here right now. So you can hear the Word of God being presented. And she's got a reason to. Well, let me tell you something, child. Let me tell you something, adults. Let me tell you something, stubborn men. You don't need a reason to come to church other than that you want the Lord to touch your heart. And He'll touch your heart. And He will change your heart. He'll make you the where you're fighting every single day of your life. And next thing you know, your only struggle you've got is you're struggling with the Lord. What's your next goal? What's the next thing for you to do? Proverbs 31, 26 says, She opens her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is a law of kindness. Let me tell you, my mama's tongue wasn't always nice. My mama's tongue wanted to point me in the way that she knew I wanted to go. Now, I'm going to ask all of your mothers that's in here right now, how many of you have at times in your life, have you looked at your child and you pointed them in the direction that you knew that they needed to go and that child didn't go that direction? Raise your hand. You look around. Now you're paying attention. Mamas, I hope you're paying attention. The rest of you have little bitty babies, and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. They're going to grow up to act stupid too. They are. They're going to turn into, they're going to turn into you is what they're going to do. So every one of your mistakes that you had growing up, your kid is going to do something that's just as good, and you're going to look back and you'll say, that kid makes me, reminds me of myself. That's what we do. So whenever I read that scripture about it, the Lord is the one that points me now. Did y'all know something? My mama always told me what to do, and now the Lord tells me what to do. And I listen. And I think about this. I've seen mamas that were struggling. They were struggling mothers to the point that they couldn't even take care, and they knew that they couldn't take care of their children the way they needed to. But they loved them, and they tried and gave everything they did. Miss Jane was talking about the fifth commandment. Whenever the Bible says in Exodus 20, 12, it says, Honor your father and mother. And there's, that, there's an, an answer to why we honor the, our father and mother. And listen to what it is. Your mother will never, ever try to get you to do something that's going to hurt you. Never. It doesn't happen that way. Well, the Bible says that we honor in our father and mother so that this will happen. That the days may be long upon the earth where the Lord would give us. And as we grow up, let me tell you something about as we grow up. As we grow up, there comes a time that we're supposed to honor our father and mother and we do it in a different way. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you forgot to hug your mama today? See, if my mama was here right now, I'm going to tell you something. I'd slobber all over. I'd hug on her. I'd love on her. You know why? Because I realize now... As a grown man, I realize all the influence that she had. I remember all the times that she stayed up till midnight waiting on me to come home from what I was doing out into the world. And I remember her praying for me. I remember her, oh, I remember that. I remember right, seeing her writings all in her Bible and where she was writing about how she prayed for me. And let me tell you something, yours did too. If your parent was a godly man or a godly woman, they prayed for you earnestly that you would go in the right direction. See, I think about this. When was the last time you told your mama that you love her? Me and my mama don't get along. I don't care. You better love her because I'm going to tell you what happens. I got a buddy of mine that he's at odds with his family like this. He's fighting all the time. And I'll tell him all the time, you better get this right. Your parents are getting old. You better get this right. No. They've never been there for me. I said, dude, you are crazy. They, I'll tell you what, all we do is fight. It's because you're doing wrong all the time. And I don't want to go and see them and tell them I love them. And I said, one of these days, whenever I preach your mama or daddy's funeral, I said, you're going to sit there and you're going to regret those times that you didn't say, mama, I love you. Daddy, I love you. 
I don't know what you're going through in your life, but I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times, all of us teenagers, when we was growing up, we'd roll our eyes at our parents and we'd run off. I'll never forget one time I, I had a little smart mouth. I know it's hard for y'all to believe that. But whenever I was a teenager, I said something real smart aleck to my, my mama. Oh, I spouted off and I remember what it is, what it was, and it's none of y'all's business because I'm, I'm ashamed of it, but it was, it was bad enough that, that I knew better. And I spouted off my big mouth as a teenager and about that time my daddy walked around the door. And he looked at me. He said, if you ever talk to my wife like that again, you don't even want to know what's going to happen to you. Hey, daddies, let me share something with you. You have a responsibility to your wife as it being your wife. As you see those kids back talking and sassing their mouth at mama, that you look at that child and you say, don't be talking to my wife like that. I don't care if you got into an argument with your wife yesterday, you better honor your wife and honor that child's mother because that child will remember it the rest of her life. Did you know that I still, I loved my daddy far more after he said that than I ever did because I knew he meant what he said. And I never spoke to my mama like that again because I knew that if I did, all she'd have to do is say, I help, Steve done talk to me mean again. Oh yeah, it'd be on. It would be on. You know why? Because he loved her. Y'all, I want you to know something. I didn't say that to be funny. I'm saying this to let you know that you better honor that woman that's in your life. Young men that's just gotten married, you better start honoring that woman that's in your life because I'm telling you, you're going to watch her do things that you never thought in the world that, that they would do. Y'all, I tell you what a mother does. I watch it every time. Y'all, I'm going to tell you, my children, they know they have a good mama. Matter of fact, they get to the point that, that I'll, I'll ask all the time, why are the kids not calling me? Why are the kids not calling me? They call you every day, talk to you every day. Some of y'all know this. Why is the kids not talking to me? You want me to tell you why they don't call me? Because I'm not their mama. And I will never be their mama. Whenever they call me, oh, I got a flat on my car. When they call me, I need an oil change. Whenever they call me, is Daddy and I have a little bit of gas? Whenever they call me, it's stuff that they need, but they call Mama for every single need that they have in the world. You know why? Because that Mama, I believe that God put them here on this earth to stand up for us through everything. That mama, I want you to see what, it, what I think about this. That mama, she cooks for us. She cleans. She buys all that food. She loves on us. Did you know something? A mama would de defend you even whenever she knows you're wrong. That mama will stand up for you. That mama also, she'll listen to you, listen to every word you have to say. If you want to talk to somebody, you go talk to mama. It'll be special. I'm going to tell you what else she does. She will heal you every time. Listen, you let a kid fall here in a minute, and I don't care how good a daddy you are. You let that baby fall on the, on the ground and mess up that knee, they going to run right to mama. You know why? Daddy going to say, oh, rub it off. You'll be all right. Put a little bit of dirt on it. Put a little bit of dirt on it. We daddies are stupid, man. I'm telling you. We're, we're saying, telling the kid, throw a little dirt on it. It'll quit bleeding. And that mama, you know what they do? Tenderly. Tenderly, they heal it, take care of it. A mama also, she'll hold you whenever you're sick. A daddy will be saying, uh-uh, that child got a runny nose. I ain't holding that. Uh, get that kid away from me. Mama will be holding on to it. That baby will be throwing up now, throwing up, and the daddy will be going, mm, 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 uh, uh, uh. Mama will be holding that baby's hair back. And y'all women, I don't get it. But you let a baby have a dirty diaper in here, we men are like, nope, nope, nope. Y'all women, oh, I'll change him, I'll change him. I don't get it. It's, it is love that I can't comprehend. Listen to me, men. Don't beat yourself up that you can't comprehend it because it is love that you don't understand. It's a love like the love of Jesus. I want y'all to think about this. 
Mama will give you hugs. Mama will honor you when you're not honorable. A mama, she'll, she'll think about this, and I'm going to tell you what, what she'll do for her children. If you listen around in this church, and mamas, thank y'all, because I'm going to tell you something this morning, all the kids that we've got in this church, that kid will cry out, wah, wah. that kid will cry out, and mama will stick a bottle in their mouth. That baby will cry out that second time, that mama will go change that diaper. That baby will cry out, and the next thing you know, that mama is going to fix that problem and the bottom line is, is we've, we've all been crybabies before. And mama fixes everything because that's what they're all about. See, I get to the point that I think about this. The older you get, let me tell you about this. My mama's getting older is what you might be thinking. Here's where the Bible talks about honoring your father and mother. Whenever your mama gets older, love on them like all get out. Whenever your mama gets older, that's whenever you start helping her around the house with love and with joy. That's whenever you get to the point that you, you help with the dishes, you help with the clothes, you help with the cleaning. You do all these things because it's part of honoring your mother in everything that you do. And it's something that you do because you do it with joy because they did it to you. They took care of you through everything that you went through. I'm about through because I want to tell you something. Every one of us... We love to make our mamas proud. My mama, she would be proud of me whenever I knew what I was like deep down inside. Y'all, let me tell you something about the Lord. The Lord loves us above all things. He loves us when we're not lovable. He loves us despite who we really are. I've got a scripture that I want to read you, and I want y'all to see what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. It's asking a question. Listen to this. It says, for, for what is our hope? What is your hope for tomorrow? What is your hope for a year from now? What is your hope for, for eternity? What is your hope? If you was going to get that, what is your hope? Or what is your joy? How do you get your joy? Do you get your joy from things that you have, things that you buy? Or do you get your joy from deep down in your heart? It goes on to say, or, or what is your, your crown of rejoicing? Or what is your time of rejoicing? How much time do you spend worshiping and praising the Lord? How much time do you spend getting into God's Word? That was a question, and listen to what the answer it is. It says, Are not even ye in the presence of the Lord Christ at His coming? Or are you not ready for the Lord whenever He comes back? For ye are the glory and the joy. The one thing I want y'all to realize is there's nothing in the world that's going to make the Lord Jesus any happier than to see you in heaven one of these days. That scripture that I read in 3 John 4, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. You know, there's some of you that, that's went out and you've asked your mama, what, mama, what do, you, what, do you want for, what do you want for Mother's Day? Because it's hard to buy for a mama, isn't it? Hard to buy for a daddy. It's hard to buy for anybody. But you know something? The one thing that you need to realize is the one thing that would give your mother the most joy that she could ever have is for you today to give your heart and soul to Jesus Christ. What would be the greatest thing that could ever happen is, oh, Steve, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Well, then the greatest thing that could happen to your mother or your grandmother is for you to live like you are. For you to grow like you are. For you to stand strong and be that man and woman of God that you need to be. That is something that your mama would want to see out of you. But let me tell you something about this. It's going to be every one of your choice what you do. See, there's going to be people here in a little while, and I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You're going to see people that, and, and for those of you that this is your first time here, let me tell you what's going to happen. It's going to blow your mind whenever you see people walking down this aisle. Let me tell you why they're walking down here. They're walking down this aisle and they, they come in here and they, 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 they get down here at this altar and they start praying for people. They may be praying for you. There may be a mother that's down here that's praying for their child that's here today that they've never been here before. It may be a parent here that knows that their kid's going down the wrong road and, and today they're saying, God, I want to pour out my heart for my child. There may be a child here that knows that their mama doesn't know the Lord 
and Savior their life so that child may come down here and say, oh Lord, I pray for my mama that she gets her heart right. I pray for my daddy. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. There's going to be a lot of business that gets taken care of here. So listen to me. If you have business that needs to be taken care of, you better do it because it's your choice. My mama gave me those suits and that inspired me to be where I'm at now because I'm going to tell you something that y'all don't know. The Lord was convicting my heart to be a pastor and I was fighting it with everything. I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm my mama's son. I'm stubborn too. The Lord was fighting with me and wrestling every day for me to become a pastor. And I was saying, nope, not going to do it. Nope, I got other plans. Nope, I'm not. And when my mother brought me those clothes, it made me realize I get it. Mama gets it. She sees it. And not one time has my mama ever tried to lead me in the wrong direction. Y'all, I want you to know something. I look back there, I see some of my youth that was in my, in my youth department whenever I, man, before I even became a pastor. And I see them and I see now that they have their own children. And they're growing them up. And every once in a while I'll see them like, oh gracious, these kids drive me crazy. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to. But let me tell you what these parents are doing now. They're having their children in the house of God so that one of these days these children are going to know the Lord as their Savior. You're here. You're here. The Spirit of God is going to convict you. If you're lost, the Spirit of God is going to uh, just point you in the right direction. Why don't you make a decision for Him this morning? That would make you, Mama, happy. Let's pray. God, I come to you. Every person here, they're thinking about what they need to do between you and them. They're not thinking about what this old world has to offer. Lord, don't let them think about their lunch today. Lord, let them think about their opportunity between you and them this morning. Lord, there would be nothing better than, than to, for a mama to see their child come to know you as Lord in their life. God, I just praise you. Lord, I love you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. As Amen. we stand and sing this morning.